Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to the San Mateo Public Library. My name is Adriana Valencia and this is our very first session of Kitchen Science and I'm super excited. So in our videos we are going to be featuring a couple science experiments. Most of them are things that you can do at home with some things that you might have at home and then we'll have at least one specialized science experiment that's um, with items that you might not have at home. So to start off our video, we are going to be making rock candy, and I'm so excited. And it's very, very simple to do. But the most important thing that I want you to remember is, rock candy takes time. So in order for that candy to grow, you do need to leave it alone for a couple days to even a couple weeks so that it gets nice and big. Um, the other science experiments are not edible, so just keep that in mind. And one of the science experiments is going to feature a very special chemical. It is 6% hydrogen peroxide, and so we're gonna be using 20 volume. And this is something that is used to um, process hair. So people who like to dye their hair, you might know that you use this chemical. Um, and so when we use this chemical, we'll want to use gloves. In the video, I did not use gloves because I'm pretty comfortable with it, but if you do do this at home, make sure that you're using gloves and that you have an adult with you, and the adult should be the only one handling this chemical because it could burn your skin. Hydrogen peroxide 6% is not the same thing as hydrogen peroxide, the one that you might have at home when your parents put it on a cut and it bubbles up. This is only 3%, so it's not enough to use for elephant's toothpaste, um, but it's still pretty good to use for your cuts. So this you'll want to keep in your first aid kit. The other one, not so much. And then our last science experiment is going to feature fire, and so we'll have a fire um, lighter and we'll keep a bowl of water near us. So for these science experiments, if you do do that at home, please, 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 please make sure that you have one, parent permission, two, supervision of an adult or someone that your parent says is good to supervise you when doing science experiments, and three, that you are in a safe environment. And with that, let's go right on into our video. All right, so here we have what we will need for a rock candy. Um, so you're going to need a small saucepan to use on the stove. We have white granulated sugar. Here I have ground cinnamon. This is the flavoring I will use. You do not have to use flavoring. Food coloring, once again, if you have food coloring, yay. If you don't, you don't have to use it. Measuring cups. I have a chip clip um, and it's for the bag of chips. You can also use a clothespin. If you don't have a clothespin, you can also use a large binder clip some type of glass that you can use to grow the crystals. I like to use the champagne flutes, but a regular um, recycled jar will work or even another glass will work. You just wanna make sure that your clip, whatever you're using, doesn't fall into the jar. And then the most important is going to be using a wooden stick. Um, if you're going to be eating this, you wanna make sure that you're using a stick that um, is food grade, so you could either reuse a stick that maybe came from an ice cream cone or you could use um, one of the pairs of chopsticks if your parents are okay with it usually because we use those for eating you should be able to use them for this if you don't have a stick at home that's okay you can also use string so if you have kitchen string or any clean string you can use that and what you would do is you would just tie the string to like a pencil and then you would let it hang down into your cup or jar um, for this science experiment, I won't show you how to do that, but you can definitely look it up online. It's pretty simple. And then lastly here, we have some plastic wrap, and that's just to seal the top of your um, cup or jar once you put your stick in it so that nothing gets into that sugar because sugar might attract bugs. So you wanna make sure that you keep it nice and covered and clean so that it is ready for you to eat once it's done growing. Alrighty, so here, we're, here we are at our next step. So I have my saucepan on the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my pre-measured one cup of water. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the stove. And I'm going to set it to medium high heat because I do wanna bring this to uh, a rapid boil. Next, I'm going to go to my sugar. And we're going to use two cups of sugar for this. So I'm going to go ahead and, sorry for shaking the table, measure out my sugar. And so you, whenever you measure things out, when you're 
cooking or baking or doing a science experiment like we're doing today, you always want to make sure that you are using the proper measurements. So when you measure dry ingredients and you're using, using a measuring cup, you always want to make sure that you slide it. Let me see if I can do this in a better way, but that won't cause a huge mess. So you just want to scrape it with the back of a fork, knife, spoon, anything so that you have a smooth, even measurement. So this way you know for sure that in this cup you have the appropriate amount of ingredients. So this is actually a smaller cup that I use, um, measuring cup. This is a third of a cup and I'm going to go ahead and pour in a third of a cup. And then we're gonna let the water boil that out. Something that I forgot to mention in our supply list is you'll need some type of spoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a wooden spoon and you're going to stir this. And you'll just stir and stir and you'll continue to add the sugar as you go. And now we're going to stir So you might see there's some more cloudy pieces of sugar. That means that the sugar isn't fully dissolved. So when it almost looks completely clear, that's when you know that your sugar has dissolved. They still have a couple pieces that are floating around that aren't fully dissolved. So I'll just keep stirring, break those up as best as I can. You might see the bottom of your pan turn a little white and you might think that that's actually the sugar but if you look closely those are actually bubbles that's bubbles from the solution boiling at the bottom since the bottom is in direct contact with the heat source that's going to get hottest fastest and then it'll start boiling the water and so we'll just let that go and boil it'll take a couple of minutes until it becomes a nice rolling boil so you start seeing that there's bubbles on the sides of the pan and it's slowly building up and getting stronger. There's so many bubbles now. And pretty much when you see all of these bubbles and almost all of the surface of the water moving from the heat that's what it means to come to a boil, to come to a rolling boil, because the water is almost rolling from all the heat. So I'm just gonna let this boil for just a few more seconds. Oops, I don't wanna drip any of the extra sugar. But really, once it comes to a rapid boil um, or a rolling boil, you're done. So you can go ahead and turn off the heat. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to let this solution cool. So it's going to take about 20 minutes. Um, fortunately, we have the power of technology on our side and you don't have to wait 20 minutes for me. So that means we're gonna go ahead and take a quick pause from this to let it cool. So now that we're waiting for our syrup to cool down because it's really hot, we just got it to a boil. I'm gonna show you a quick trick that you'll want to do to help speed up your crystal fry. So you are gonna use a plate, a flat plate. You're gonna put down some of that granulated sugar we used. I'm using a piece of parchment because I do not own any flat plates. All of my plates are curved. Um, and pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our stick, we're gonna dip that in that solution while it's still warm, and then we're gonna roll it in the sugar to get it all nice and coated. And you wanna make sure that it's just enough, um, just enough coat on it to fit in the glass. You don't wanna roll it too much and have some of that sugar sticking out because that just makes it harder. So measure it against the glass that you have and then that's what you'll use. So let me go ahead and dip this in my solution. That syrup that we made, as you can tell, it is drippy, dripping with sugary goodness. And now I'm gonna roll it in my sugar and 
then I'm gonna let this dry. And I can pretty much just leave this alone until the syrup is cooled. And so let me see if I can bring this up to the camera. Sorry for shaking the camera. But you see it's coated, it's gonna be just enough to pin that glass. So let's leave it there to dry and then we'll be right back. All right, so our solution here has cooled and you might even notice that it looks a little uh, thicker. So let me show you guys. So it's still pretty thin, but as you can see, when I dip the spoon, it coats the spoon nicely. And that's because we've ultimately, excuse me, we've ultimately made a syrup. Okay, and so now you're going to be adding this to your glass. This is the time that you'll want to add any flavorings if you want to add flavorings, or if you're gonna add any food color, you can add it directly to your container. So if you're using liquid food coloring, you'll want to add as much as you want to create the color that you'd like. Since I'm adding cinnamon, I'm adding quite a bit of cinnamon because I like cinnamon and sugar together. So I added quite a bit to my glass. And so now I'm going to use a serving ladle um, because I have to work around this camera, but you are able to just pour this into the glass if you have a steady hand. You don't actually need a serving ladle, um, but I find it that it's easier for me because I have too many things in the kitchen that I'm trying to balance. So I'm just gonna serve it in here. And I'm making a little bit of a mess. And so you wanna fill the glass almost all the way. You can leave about an inch from the top open. And then if you added any food coloring or if you added any uh, flavorings, Let's see if you can see that. Now you can stir it, make sure that everything is dissolved. So once you think yours is nicely mixed to the point that you're pleased with it. I'm gonna scoop out some of this extra powder that's at the top of my cup. Then you're ready to put your stick in. And so you remember how we dipped the stick in the syrup before it had fully cooled and rolled it in the sugar? We're gonna use that. And so if you notice, let's see if I can bring it up nice and close. I'm a little shaky, but you'll notice there's some crystals already on it. You wanna make sure that those crystals aren't falling off. And you're gonna dip it into your glass. It's best to make sure that the stick isn't touching the bottom of your glass. And when possible, try not to let it touch the sides, but if it touches the sides a little bit, it should be fine. You might just need to move your stick around a little bit while it's, while it's setting. So here's the rock candy. The glass is still pretty warm because of the container, but now we're just going to wait. And since I have extra solution, this recipe, had enough to make two rock candies. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this other one and hopefully be a little less messy. Oops, spoke too soon. And don't forget that this is sugar. So if you do make a mess, you wanna make sure that you wipe that up as quickly as you can so it doesn't get too hard and it doesn't attract any bugs. So I only have a little bit left, so I'm just gonna pour it. All right, put this in the sink. Okay. So now I have my two rock candy solutions. I have my sticks in them. They are hovering above. Neither one of them are touching the bottoms. Now you need to find a safe place to put these. So ideally somewhere that won't be um, handled too much so that they can stay perfectly still will be good. Um, if you don't have that, then something else that you could do is place them uh, on top of your fridge. Usually that stays pretty neutral, less movement. 
but ideally just put them away somewhere where you can sort of forget about them, but you, it's easy for you to check them. The last step to do is the plastic wrap. And so the plastic wrap is just to help seal the glass so that nothing else gets inside of it. And so there's different ways to use the glass or to use the plastic wrap. You can just wrap around your binder clip to make sure that you've sealed everything oops, everything in. And so that's what I'm going to do here. The other part that you could do is before you added your, your clip, you could have poked it through the top of your stick, so like this. And so that way you have a much better seal. And so that's pretty much all that you need to do. And you'll want to make sure that you do it for both of them. If you did make a mess on the sides, I would go ahead and use a wet paper towel and just wipe that off so that you don't leave any sticky residue wherever you put these. I'm sure your mom and your dad or whoever is the adult at home that helps keep that kitchen clean, they probably won't be too pleased if you leave sticky rings of sugar crystals everywhere. So clean up your space. We'll just leave them here for now, actually. I think this is a pretty good spot for them where nothing will bother them. Let me just make some room, leave it here. It's still pretty bright here because it's facing the window. Um, but when I check back in and it's still not growing well, I can very gently and carefully move it to a different location and maybe even put it inside of, inside of my pantry. But for now, I think this is fine. Now, in order to grow the rock candy, It's very important that you be patient. Rock candy, you'll start seeing some growth after maybe three days, but you'll really want to leave it alone and growing for a week. I wanted to share with you what the crystals look like. So after a few days, you'll start noticing that crystals will form on the top of your glass. And if it's clear and you didn't put any food coloring, this is what it would look like. When you're ready to take your stick out of glass, you'll have to gently crack that top um, to remove it so that you can take the stick out. If you're wondering how long it takes to grow, I wanna show you a stick that I've had for just uh, a couple days. So if you'll notice the top, there's a little bit of a crystal growing. But if you go to the bottom, you'll notice that there's a significant increase of crystal growth. And this is after three days. And then here on my stick, you'll see I have just a few crystals. And on this, I didn't add sugar to it first to help with this crystal growth. And I think that really would have helped, but you'll notice that there's some significant growth here. Okay. So this is what your stick will look like after a week. Um, depending on where you store your rock candy, it could grow bigger if it's in a warmer area. This one I kept close to my kitchen window and so it was a little too cool for the crystals to grow quickly. But it's that simple. So you just have to leave it alone. So once you put it in your containers, leave them alone. You can peek on them if you want um, every day to see how the growth is. You can track the growth, but you don't wanna move it because if you shift it too much, then the crystals could detach from the stick and you'll just have more crystals floating at the bottom of your glass. All right, so here are the supplies that we'll need for elephant's toothpaste. We have some dish soap. I have here volume 20, food coloring, yeast, an empty water bottle or some type of clean bottle, some measuring spoons, some measuring cups. I have a bowl of hot water and then a smaller bowl for mixing. Also, you'll want to either do this outside, somewhere that you can easily clean up or use some type of tray. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start. So I have here my empty and clean water bottle. I don't have a funnel, 
So I quickly am just making a makeshift funnel out of parchment paper. Um, if you don't have parchment paper and you don't have a funnel at home, then you just have to have a pretty steady hand. And so now what we're going to do is measure out our our volume 20. So this is 6% hydrogen peroxide. We are going to do half a cup. So I have my half a cup measuring cup. Once again, if you do this with hydrogen peroxide, you might want to use gloves because this is still a chemical. Okay. All right. So now we have our hydrogen peroxide in our container. And now we can add some food coloring. So if you have your food coloring, this is the time to open it. It's a brand new box. I think I'm going to use this pink. And you can add however many drops you think you want. I'm gonna add quite a few because I want it to be pretty red. Okay. So it's in there. Now I'm gonna add some liquid soap. So for this, you'll want to add about a tablespoon. If you don't have a tablespoon measuring, um, measuring spoon, then you could just add it by eye and you just wanna squeeze it for maybe a couple seconds. It doesn't take that much. Okay, so now we have our soap in there. Now in that separate container that I had, I'm going to mix in the yeast packet with some warm water. So you'll need three tablespoons of warm water. So measuring that out. So now here I have three tablespoons of warm water. I'm going to open up my yeast and one packet is what you'll need okay so you're gonna pour it into that warm water that you just measured out and then using another spoon go ahead and stir that you're gonna want to mix it for about 30 seconds and you'll notice that it'll start getting a little foamy and you'll smell the yeast activate almost right away. And it should get to the consistency of like melted ice cream. If it still is too, too clumpy, then you might need to add a little bit more water, which is fine. And I think I might add just a little bit more water because it's, it's pretty clumpy. So let me do that now. Do, 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 do. I'm just gonna add one more tablespoon of warm water. Okay, so now it's a pretty good consistency. It's a little bit thick, but not super thick. It's still some clumps, but not a lot. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. All right, so I'm gonna put that down. Now that the soap is in here, the food coloring is here, and it looks like everything is ready. I'm going to move my extra materials off of my tray. I'm going to close my hydrogen peroxide because I want to make sure that this chemical is sealed. Oops. There we go. I'm going to put that aside. Close my soap. All right. And now I think we are ready. So here's the hard part if you don't have a funnel. You have to pour your yeast into your bottle and it's going to react pretty quickly. So if you made that impromptu um, funnel, you're gonna to wanna to use that one more time. I didn't get to use my funnel, so I'm just gonna very carefully pour it in. So hopefully you can see the bottom of the bottle, which is not in the stand that I can see. I'm just gonna move this around because I can't see on my tripod. All right, so it looks like it is pretty centered. All right, so ready? Now we're gonna pour it in. All right, so stand back. I made a little bit of a mess. 
But do you notice what's happening? All that foam. And the foam is pretty awesome. It's a really nice color. I'm very happy with the food coloring choice that I made. And so this is the elephant toothpaste science experiment. So it's an extra special reaction because what's happening is all of these little foam bubbles are being created and they're being filled with oxygen because yeast acts as a catalyst. And what a catalyst is, it just is something that speeds up a reaction. So it makes something happen faster. So this something was creating all of these bubbles. And so when you mix yeast with warm water, that's the first step of the reaction because yeast is alive and that's why it had that smell. Yeast is also what we use to make bread and other, um, other foods. So we do use it quite a bit in the kitchen. Also, this experiment creates an exothermic reaction, which means that not only is the foam created, but it gets hot. And if you do this at home and you very carefully touch the bottle, the bottle actually feels very warm and that's because it created heat. And so right now this foam that's here on the bottom of our tray is just water, soap, and oxygen. So you really don't need anything extra to clean it up because the reaction caused that chemical, the hydrogen peroxide, to change into something completely different. And so that is elephant's toothpaste and it's very, very simple to use. Just remember, it's not real toothpaste, so you don't wanna put it in your mouth. All right, for our next science experiment, we are doing carbon dioxide fire extinguisher, and it's very simple. We're gonna be using some baking soda, some vinegar, a clear cup or jar, have some candles, because I'm using regular birthday candles, I'm gonna use some Play-Doh to hold them up, but if you have tea light candles, those work best. Um, some type of lighter, and then I'm just using a tablespoon measurement to um, measure out the baking soda. And that's pretty much it, so let's set this up. Oh, and also, because we are using fire, I like to keep a bowl of water around, just in case. Um, it's always better to do this somewhere where it's not flammable, so if you're outside, that might be best. And always remember um, to ask for parent permission or have a parent present whenever you're doing science experiments. All right, let's go. All right. So as you can see, I have my candles lined up on my tray. Now what I'm going to do is, using my measuring spoon, I'm gonna put in a couple tablespoons of baking soda. So I'm putting just about two tablespoons. I'm trying to break up those big clumps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to light my candles because this reaction happens pretty quickly. Once you start adding that vinegar, that's when all that gas is building up. Okay, it looks like this one doesn't want to light. All right, so it looks like that last one didn't want to light. Not really sure why, but that's okay. All right, so now we have our jar. We're going to put our vinegar. And then immediately we are going to pour out the gas and turn off our candles. And so I make sure not to pour out any of the liquid. So make sure that you don't pour any of the liquid, you're just using the gas. And that's exactly what I did. None of my candles are wet and all of my flames are off. All right, so I hope you guys liked those science experiments. Um, I just wanna take it back a little bit to the rock candy. So this is just for um, you guys to know. So this is what the rock candy will look like. It's very, very sweet. It's literally just sugar. Mine is brown because of that cinnamon, cinnamon that I put on it. And so I can taste the cinnamon in the sugar. And it's really yummy. So now you might be wondering what to do with those glasses that have that rock candy buildup at the bottom. These you're going to want to leave soaking in your sink for a little bit and then you can scrub the crystals out but they're stuck on there pretty hard so you want to leave them at least overnight and then if you're wondering what to do with the syrup that's still in there 
you can always repurpose that syrup so you can boil it down and add more water to create your own simple syrup and that's something that you can use in cooking for pancakes or cakes or if you like to make your own bubbly drinks you can use that to make flavored um, simple syrups for bubbly drinks like lavender fizz or rosemary fizz and things like that so um, feel free to look on the internet for other recipes for those items or you could just toss the syrup too because that is a lot of sugar all right, well, thank you so much for watching. Definitely stay tuned to our social media, our YouTube channel, and of course our website for additional videos um, and for any future updates. Thanks guys, bye.